sing in exultation, sing all your citizens of heaven above. Glory to God in the highest. Christmas holiday weekend. So glad you're with me today. I'm Rick Patterson, your host, your teacher here with CLC TV here in live Miami, Florida. Nice to have you with me. Thank you for being in the audience today. You know, you could help me by sharing this link very quickly to all of your friends and family on your social media. Also, it's very important if you would look at the rumble.com slash Dr. Rick. Most of our broadcasting is going to go there. That is where we're developing our major platform. As just this week, YouTube brought down three of my videos in the past. And so we're in a point on time where there's so much censorship and by going to Rumble, we're able to broadcast information freely without the, the AI of, of artificial intelligence of Facebook and of YouTube beginning to ban things. But regardless of that, this is going to be a great day. You're going to be blessed today and I guarantee it because I want you to remember something. You are more than your body more than the limitations of your body, more than the limitations of your current belief system. Everything that is about Christmas is about how much God loves you. Today's message, we're going to talk about unwrapping your spiritual gift this Christmas, finding your true worth and your true greatness as the result of this wonderful Christmas season. This is a very important time of the year. And I join with all of our friends and family and all of you in our church family and all of you that are on our uh, YouTube or on our Rumble, on our broadcast. Welcome and Merry, Merry Christmas. Okay, let's get right into today's message today. And um, I want you to take a moment to think about what Christmas really means. Okay, what does Christmas really mean to you? You see, the true significance of this season a time of celebration. Of course, it's the birth of our Savior, but it's also the releasing of His divine love and purposes in your life. That's what Christmas is all about. God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever would believe in Him would not perish but have everlasting life, John three sixteen. You see, you are the reason Jesus came. You're the reason God sent His Son to redeem you back to him. So this Christmas season, ultimately, it's about God's love. It's about God's love for you and all of humanity. God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. I want you to remember that as we get into today's message. Now, during this Christmas season, I want to look at Ephesians chapter 2, verse number 10. Because it is the birth of hope, birth of love, and it's the birth of divine greatness in your life. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to read here from Ephesians chapter 2, verse uh, 10. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Now look at what the, the um, Message Bible says. He creates each of us by Christ Jesus to join him in the work he does. The good work he has gotten ready for us to do. And we'd better be doing it. Okay. So we're at a point now where as you begin to understand, Christmas is not about all the stuff. It's not about the Christmas tree. It's not about the Christmas lights. It's not about... It is about all of what God's divine plan and purpose to bring man back into fellowship and relationship with the Father. And the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse number 17, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away, and behold, all things are become new. Everything of your past life, all of your past history, those of you who still have a struggle and you say, you believe, well, uh, you know, my past lives, or all this kind of stuff. Well, listen, you can forget about all of that. You can forget about karma. You can forget about past lives because in Christ Jesus, all things become new. Some of you understand what I just said. All things have become new. Now, we look inside and what we see is that anyone united with the Messiah gets a fresh start, created new. 
The old life is gone and the new life virgins. So everything. So whatever your philosophical background and concept is, the reality is in Christmas, the birth of Jesus, accepting Jesus as your Lord and Savior, everything now becomes new in Christ. Now, Christmas gives you access to all things that are new. Access. I want us to look at 1 Peter chapter 2, verse number 9. Now, this is so important because we have this concept in Christendom today that particularly with all the issues going on in the Middle East and so forth, but we have lost, as Christians, perspective of who we are. Peter says, but you are a chosen generation. You. Look at somebody next to you say, you are a chosen generation. A royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people that you should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. You are a chosen generation. Doesn't matter that we live in this time period. We doesn't, doesn't matter what's going on in as far as the world economics, where that's the what doesn't matter. Those of us who are in Christ, we are a chosen generation. You have been chosen before the foundations of the earth to live in this generation and to begin to radiate and to reflect the God's love and light. And you're a royal priesthood and a holy nation. Now let's break that down. You see, when it talks about being a chosen generation, You see, many of the church fathers saw this as an affirmation of the Christian's community unique role in God's plan. You and I have a unique, special role in the purposes of God on this earth. St. Augustine says, for example, spoke of Christians as chosen by God's grace. You have been selected, set apart, preordained, to be a part of this generation, to be able to bring the glory of the gospel of Jesus Christ to all who hear. Now, the Greek word in there, and uh, uh, eklos, means to be chosen, to be elect, okay? A generation, a special race. So this implies that a group of selected by God across a period of time, and this represents the idea and the understanding that Christians are chosen by God to fulfill a special purpose in the world. That's why we've constantly told you there's neither black nor white, bond or free, Jew or Gentile. Once you have become a part of the kingdom of God, you are a part of a royal priesthood. You become a holy nation. You become a new group of people. Now, the word royal priesthood that he talks about here in 1 uh, 1 Peter, in the early church view, the St. Christian emphasize that the dignity of the believers, describing them as a part of a priesthood that offers spiritual sacrifices to God. Now, the Bible tells us while we offer up sacrifice to God, Romans chapter 12, that we offer ourselves a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto him. We live our lives as an ongoing sacrifice of God's love and appreciation. But that Greek meaning means a priesthood, a group of people, who God has divinely selected. You are a part of that divine purpose, and he has selected you in a kingly, sovereign manner to be a part of his royal priesthood. This not only indicates that we have been chosen by God, but we are called to serve him in a specific manner that reflects both authority and humility in this generation. The world is not going to be transformed and changed until the body the, excuse me, the body of Christ begins to take on our rightful role and position as that royal priesthood. Now, when he talks about a holy nation, <coughs> Origen and others spoke about the church as a holy nation. Now, this is so important because we, as the body of Christ, are a holy nation, separate and distinct from all other earthly n- nations because we have been called out by God and we are dedicated for his service. This is so important because we are now seeing wars. We're seeing crises. We're seeing this. We're seeing that. We're seeing the Middle East blow up as all of the Palestinian and the, and the Israel begins to go to war, beginning to bring us into another particular conflict. We've seen the same thing happen in Ukraine. We're looking at Taiwan. We're looking at all kinds of things created because people have not come to the understanding that the true nation is the nation of God. We are a separate holy people. This concept 
reinforces the idea that you and I of the Christian community are distinct and we're separate from the secular world and we are dedicated to God's purpose. We are a holy nation. Look at somebody and tell them, you're a holy nation, okay? Tell them you're a holy nation. Now, then it goes down, he says, peculiar people. I've heard people say, I'm kind of weird, and of course we know that. Peculiar people. This is often interpreted, it means a people who are distinct, unique, belonging solely to God. Belonging solely to God. A peculiar people. In the Greek, in the Strong's, it means people or being a particular possession or treasure of God. This suggests that Christians are a treasured people who are truly unique and truly belong to God. You are very important. And that's why we're saying this Christmas, unwrap. This Christmas, unwrap your spiritual gift of your true greatness in Christ Jesus. Unwrap it, okay? Don't think of yourself as not important, okay? Now, the last part of that verse, he says, he has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Now, the imagery of this is used extensively by the church fathers, including St. Gregory of Nyssa, who describes the transformation experience by Christians through Christ as a state of, moving from a state of ignorance or sin to a state of enlightenment or salvation. This is important because it indicates, it signifies a transformation process, a redemption offered through Christ, moving from life without God, darkness, into a one filled into his presence, into the marvelous light of God. So when we see the light shining in the darkness, when we see the star of Bethlehem, when you see the star on top of your Christmas trees, it's an indication that you and I, through Jesus Christ, have now embraced that light and we have become a part of his purpose and his plan. I hope you're listening to me today. This is going to be a great teaching today. So we're going to unwrap your spiritual gift this Christmas. Unwrap it, okay? To find your true greatness. Now let me give some definitions for a moment. One of the problems that we have, and and listen, we all go through this. Hang on. We all go through this in our own lives. Now this particular Christmas has been very, very tenuous for me and my family. Those of you know, we just, as a family, just got over... COVID for the last 10 days. We're still in recovery from it, but all of the issues that's going along with that, we're, I mean, it, it, it knocked us down and um, our, the people that we have to help with Ricky and Sherry and he needs 24 hour care. It became very difficult because they also got sick and couldn't come in and to help. So for 10 days now, we have been struggling in all of this and you sometimes see yourself Because you're not able to do up all the Christmas decorations, do all the Christmas cooking, all of the things you traditionally have. And all of a sudden you get a little bit, at least I started to, get a little bit uh, frustrated. And then you begin to think of yourself as unimportant, insignificant, and meaningless. But listen to me. That is simply the illusion that is trying to create a lie in your life. Because Christmas is about how much God loves you. No matter what kind of stuff you, whether you have decorations, whether you have a Christmas turkey, whether you have presents under the tree, whether you have people that come and see you or don't come and see you, you do not allow yourself to create this concept of littleness, unimportant, insignificance, which imposes self-limitations on yourself. It is when we focus on the trivial, the material, and the fleeting And in doing so, we lose sight of what truly matters. It's not about the gifts. It's not about the Christmas tree. It's not about your family coming to visit you or don't coming to visit you. Okay? It's not about the Christmas parties. It's all about what is truly important. And what is truly important is the greatest gift of all was Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ coming into your life to making you a part of his royal priesthood, his holy nation, his chosen generation, his ecclesia, his church. You see, our quest for material gains, societal approval, we often find ourselves empty. 
And sometimes, you know, and, 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 and this is the first time in all the years we've been in Miami that we didn't have a big Christmas party. I didn't have a Christmas party at my house, didn't, wasn't able to do it because of, because of the, the issue with COVID. And, you know, I, I found myself, I was getting a little discouraged and depressed because to me, a part of my Christmas celebration and identification was to be able to have members of the church come over and so forth. We couldn't do that. And as a result of that, it's, it was all of a sudden I found myself as, man, what a bummer Christmas. Then I had to shake myself. Then I had to realize it's not about the Christmas party. Christmas is about what Christ has done in you. You see, the manger was a very simple scene, yet it held the greatest gift of all. There was no Christmas lights at Christmas, at uh, the manger. There was no Christmas trees. There was no uh, all kinds of things that you would think about Christmas today. Truly, contentment does not come from the possessions, but from the peace and the love that's within. Beginning to thank God. Thank God for your Hell, thank God for the reality of who you are in Christ Jesus. Now, on the other hand, from thinking of littleness and thinking of uh, insignificance, and you know you're just another number, you're just another social security number, you're just another statistic, Christmas gives you the meaning of magnitude. It is the God-given potential, the vastness of our spirit, the same vastness that embodied Jesus Christ. The Bible says the same spirit that dwelled in Christ Jesus dwells in your mortal body. <coughs> this Christmas, let's seek the same magnitude within ourselves, understanding. Okay. There's a choice we and I, you and I make during these times and these seasons. It's easy and most of you know that Christmas season for many, many people and, and large percent of our population becomes a very, very difficult time, time of depression and, and loneliness. But the choice, the personal choice you and I must make as self-reflection. And every choice is a mirror reflecting of our self-perception. You ask yourself, do my choices reflect the belief of my own littleness or my divine magnitude and magnificence? Do I see myself as the container, the temple of the Holy Spirit? Or do I see myself as just this individual wandering around, hoping something good would happen? Do my choices reflect the greatness of God's gift found in Christmas? Think about that. You see, once we internalize the gift of God, the greatest gift, then it becomes less significant of the external gifts. Oh, yes, it's always wonderful to give. And, you know, those of you who have been blessed by our ministry and our teaching over the years, I want to encourage you, take a moment and make a gift to Christ Life Center. And you can do that by text giving 73256, 73256, Christ Life Center on the subject line, one word. Or you can click on the QR code. Now, it's not a matter of a particular material gift, but also it's a matter of your gratitude and your gratefulness of this teaching and the teachings we've been giving you over and over these many, many years. But one of the consequences of choosing and to seeing yourself as little and insignificant leads to a life half-lived, a spirit that's unfulfilled. It's like receiving a precious gift and never unwrapping it and never appreciating it. But on the other hand, when you begin embrace the greatness, the magnitude of our spiritual reality, it is recognizing that when each of us, there's the spark of the divine, the spark of Christ, the life of Christ, a fragment of the same glory that shone brightly into the star of Bethlehem. What a beautiful picture that is, isn't it? So when you unwrap your spiritual gift this Christmas, you unwrap, and when you unwrap it, you find your true greatness. Each of us, like Christ, have a divine purpose. You're very special. This Christmas, I want to challenge you to commit to discovering and living out what your purpose is. Breaking free from the, tr from the chains of feeling insignificant and little. Oh, someone says, but I'm old, I'm retired, I'm this, I'm that, I'm that. No, you're not any of those things. Your body may be old, 
physically, chronologically in this planet, but you're not old at all. You're an eternal being. You are a spirit being living in a human body. So when you begin to embrace the spiritual reality of who you are and not look at the external packaging in which you are encompassed in, that you are walking around in, break free from that limitation. You're more than your body. You're more than the limitations of your body. The Holy Spirit will begin to guide you from the concept of littleness to a concept of magnificence and greatness. In fact, if you'll listen right now, the Holy Spirit whispers in your heart and your ears, urging you to rise to your full stature, to embrace what it means to be a part of the body of Christ, to live in the fullness of the being in Christ. And as you celebrate this Christmas, choose to remember the magnitude over littleness, your greatness over insignificance, and let us embrace and recognize not only the vastness and the greatness within us, but all of those around you. Think about it for a moment. You see, when you begin to understand the Christ life within you, then you can begin to see the Christ life in others. Until you understand that, you will always be looking at others and you'll be rating them based upon, well, they're important, they're not important, they're significant, they're not significant. You know, it's like somebody, well, I have a significant person or this uh, a very wealthy client or this or that or or this person's very important this person's a VIP this person is a, a CEO this person's a chairman of the board this person's a doctor you know see you see none of those titles impress me at all they really don't They make no absolute impact on me. I've been to the White House. I've been to the Senate. I've been to Congress. I've been to, and I, I've been all over those places. And you know what I found out? That the president, the kings, all of them are still human beings. They're no more important than you. They're no important than, than anyone else. They're simply in a different position in this present reality. All that matters is what Christ came to reveal in you. And as you see that in you, you can see it in others. You see, it's the call to the inner awakening, the enlightenment. Let this Christmas mark the beginning of your journey to your true self, your life in Christ, and seek moments of reflection, acts of kindness, and deep connections with the divine. Okay? So, now, unwrap your spiritual gift this Christmas. And I hope that I've shared something that's going to bless you today. I hope that this Christmas will not be about the presents you have or don't have, the family member who called or didn't call, the Christmas card that you got or didn't get. It's not about the food. It's about you taking the time to reflect on the greatest gift of all, Jesus Christ within you. Think about it for a moment. Wow. Take a couple deep breaths. And just begin to inhale. Exhale and just say, Lord, I access that life, the great gift that's within me, the life of Christ. And as you do that, I believe you'll be blessed. I've got a couple of videos I'm going to show you. I can't teach you any more about Christmas than what I've already taught you over the last probably five to six weeks. You can go back and look at the videos. We've talked about the prophecies. We've talked about all the the various uh, uh, things in, in the scripture and history about the birth of Jesus Christ and its significance. But all of the historical, archaeological, biblical texts are meaningless until you embrace the gift 
of the Christ that's within you. Finding your true greatness in him. I'll be right back after these videos, and I want to thank you for being with me. God bless you. I love you, and Merry, Merry Christmas. But you, O Bethlehem Ephrathah, who are too little to be among the clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to be ruler in Israel, whose coming forth is from old, from ancient days. Therefore, he shall give them up unto the time when she who is in labor has given birth, and he shall be their peace. A reading from the scroll of the prophet Micah. Perfect. No, no blemish. Nothing. Nothing wrong. See? Mm. Spotless. Good. No blemish. This one's good. Thank you. Thank you. Teacher, I have a question about the Messiah. I've studied Torah every day. A and shepherd wants to learn. Yes. Do you believe the Messiah will set us free from the occupation? Yes, he will make a great military leader. Are you sure? Just because last Shabbat the priest read from Prophet Ezekiel and he did not say... How dare you? I'm sorry, teacher. He is obsessed. You brought this animal? I said spotless. Spotless, yes. These are for righteous men. For the perfect sacrifice. Very sorry. Very sorry. Very sorry. You wonder why the Messiah hasn't come? People like you keeping him away with your stains. If you come back here without a perfect lamb, I will banish you all from the marketplace. Now, come, come. I warned you about this. Are you deaf as well as me? I'm sorry. We are not slowing down for you. You take this rat back up to the hill and try and keep up. Or find your own way back.
the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in a land of deep darkness, on them has light shone. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as they are glad when they divided the spoil. For the yoke of his burden and the staff for his shoulder, the rod of you his oppressor, you I want to listen? No, this is a holy place. Go. Please, you are filthy. Go. For every boot of Get the out. trapping warrior in battle tumult, and every garment rolled in blood will be burned as fuel for the fire. Strengthen the weak hands. Excuse me, friend. Could you point me to a well in this town? My wife hasn't had a drink in hours. At the other end of the square. Thank you, brother. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Here. Oh, thank you for your kindness. How far have you come? From Galilee, Nazareth. Don't say that too loud here. You know, they say, uh, Nothing good can come from... I know what they say about Nazareth. Don't worry, I won't tell anyone. Secret safe with me. Thank you for your kindness. And my name is Simon. Out of my way. We must go. who have an anxious heart be strong. Fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance, with the recompense of God. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then shall the lame man leap like a deer, and the tongue of the mute shall sing for joy. A reading from the scroll of the prophet Isaiah. This way. <laughs> yes, well, next time I will wipe my hands with his robe. He would faint. <laughs> a Pharisee is so cheap. When he writes his will, he names himself as the heir. <laughs> <laughs> and then he still doesn't get much. No. <laughs> uh, <laughs> finally, he's back. Uh, Hello, uh, Simon. <coughs> Stay with the sheep. He is useless. Why do you keep him around? He's a good boy. Uh, yeah. You want some dinner? Finally. Aaron made dinner tonight, so <laughs> nothing is cooked. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> the food is fine. It's my grandmother's recipe, so leave it alone. <laughs> yeah, then that is why your grandfather left. <laughs> <laughs> Again and again. Hey, take whatever they want. Oh, I wish that woman wouldn't have left the well. Oh, she was she was very, very beautiful. pretty. Very pretty. Mm. Very beautiful. Can I have my dinner now? Not with us. No. Your plate is over there. After what happened this morning, you sleep with the sheep tonight. And pay attention this time. And watch out for wolves. Watch out for the Pharisee. He might come after you. Mm -hmm. A Roman took another sheep yesterday. Simon, they're talking about the Romans again. But they've cooked it right in front of me. You're, you're, you're lucky. You're lucky enough? you're not part of this conversation about they're Romans not. again and again. Let them do pay. Good pay. Take, they take That's whatever they want. Let's talk about something else.
Tell someone. No, he must tell everyone. He must tell everyone. Tell everyone. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. To us, a child is born. To 
us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace there will be no end, to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time forth and forevermore. I told you not to come back here. So where is it? Have you found a spotless lamb for sacrifice? I hope that movie from The Chosen absolutely sparked a absolute moment of joy in your life. I mean, it, it is one of the most concise relative videos that I've found over the years, the movie Chosen, and it is absolutely a blessing to me, and I hope it was a blessing to you. So before I leave this broadcast today, I want to thank you. I want to thank you for being a part of our broadcast. I want to thank you for sharing the links. And I want to thank you for being a great audience. And I want to say to you, have yourself a Merry Christmas. And as I do every Christmas broadcast, I share this one song that's so important to me. A song sung by Bobby Helms, Jingle Bell Rock. The reason it's significant is because Bobby Helms was a personal friend of my family. And when I was two years old, our family was having a, um, a actually, a uh, we were at a park having a picnic. And I wandered off and I fell into a, a, a lake or a pond there at the park. And uh, it was Bobby Helms that pulled me out and saved my life. So enjoy because... Without Bobby Helms and Jingle Bell Rock, I wouldn't be here today. And think of what a blessing you'd be missing. <laughs> All right, God bless you. Thanks for being with me. I look forward to seeing you next Sunday. God bless you. I love you. And Jesus is Lord. And don't you forget about it. Jingle bells swing and jingle bells ring Snowing and blowing a bushels of fun Now the jingle hop has begun Jingle bell, jingle bell, jingle bell rock Jingle bells chime and jingle bell time Dancing and prancing in jingle bell square In the frosty air Jingle bell time is a swell time To go gliding in the one horse sleigh Giddy up jingle horse, pick up your feet Jingle up around the clock Mix and a mingle in the jingle and feet That's the jingle bell rock
gliding in the one horse lane. Giddy up, jingle horse, pick up your feet. Jingle up, 